Now let's go to another teacher obsessed with their own gender identity talking about a student giving her gender euphoria. You. I am a non-binary middle school special education teacher and only my two paraprofessionals know that I'm non-binary because that's not like a conversation I want to have with parents and admin right now. Anyway, one of my students said that I was a beautiful king the other day and that was just so affirming. It gave me the gender euphoria. Have a good day. You are not a king, uh, no. Another celebrity lefty losing it, and I use the word celebrity in the loosest possible term here, but we've got Elisa Milano for you with a public service announcement. Women don't inseminate themselves. Women don't inseminate themselves. Women don't inseminate themselves. Women don't inseminate themselves. Thanks for that. Now, talking about who can inseminate and who can't, uh, have you noticed there's been a rise in crimes committed by women, the sort of crimes women normally don't commit? Of course, many of these women share certain characteristics like being natural born men. Here's the latest example and good on the Daily Mail for at least noting in their headline that the accused here is a transgender woman. Normally the headline misses that detail and the story just refers to a female offender woman. Now this one calls themselves uh, Abby Taylor. They're standing accused of dumping soiled adult nappies at children's nurseries and offences such as uh, criminal damage by smearing excrement on milk bottles intended for consumption by small children. Woman. Yeah, I don't think so. Abby Taylor, whose real name, as it appeared on the court list, is Martin Tarling, said that he prefers to be addressed as Taylor and prefers she, her pronouns. And, of course, everyone has to respect that. I don't know about you, but what we just heard about there sounds like, I don't know, a mental illness that requires treatment, not validation and affirmation. Now, let's see what the Biden White House is up to and see how even the little things differ dramatically from the Trump era. Take the First Ladies and their Christmas celebrations. Now, watch this and see if you can note the subtle differences between Melania's and Jill's offering here. Of course, you'd remember, we were told that Biden was going to be restoring decency to the White House. Let's have a look at how that's going. That doesn't even involve Hunter and his stash. This is Boston Mayor Michelle Wu defending racist Christmas gatherings that exclude people based on nothing other than their race. Talk about a lefty losing it. I think we've we've had individual conversations with everyone so people understand that it was truly just a, an honest mistake that went out in, in typing the email field and um, I look forward to celebrating with everyone at the holiday parties that we will have besides this one as well. Besides this one, that would be the segregated party that excluded white people, that one, yes. Now to Germany, where students at a Berlin university attack a student putting up posters of Israeli hostages. Germans being anti-Semitic loons, we've come full circle. <laughs> We've finally got an explanation of what happened with that BBC newsreader being caught giving the middle finger on camera.
Live from London, this is BBC News. <laughs> As I said at the time, it was funny. I don't know why people are so offended. Let's go to an important question now. Have you decolonized your veganism, you racist monsters? Products are unethical because I use leather or people messaging me asking me to use vegan leather instead. And y'all, please stop. It is not more sustainable or ethical to use plastic over indigenous processed deer hide. If you wanna live a life filled with environmentalism, then you need to look towards indigenous people, practices, and products. The vegan movement is so focused on the no animal rule that they're forgetting just how racist they're being. Very important, very important to be decolonizing your veganism every day. Now let's hear from this totally sane and sensible soul. This trans activist just wants to stab people. What could go wrong? Not to be like overly dramatic or anything, can we just start stabbing transphobes at this point? Like we have such a big problem of transphobic people being f***ing idiots and not getting their shit kicked in. Can we just start kicking their shit in? It would be so much easier for everyone, every, the entire world would be so much better if we could just stab a transphobe. You say something transphobic, you get stabbed. The world would be beautiful. Let's hear more about gender euphoria, or to be more accurate, mocking women. Does that give me gender euphoria, but it gets increasingly more unhinged doing housework? There's just something that's so mommy coded about destroying a mountain of dishes or like crisply folding laundry. Beating men. Not like physically beating men, but like winning against men in like sports or a video game or life itself. Also the color green. I understand that colors don't have gender, but a good green, that's just for the girls, babe. Next, I'm gonna have to say crying. Before I transitioned, I was one of those girls dash boys who like never cried. And now it's everyday like clockwork. And honestly, what is girlier than sobbing on Controllably. Time to check in with the far left activists of Get Up who have some thoughts on nuclear power. We've already seen a handful of nations here at COP28 pledge to nuclear energy by 2050. Not cool, guys, literally. We've all seen Homer Simpson working at the nuclear plant, right? Or Chernobyl or Fukushima? Thankfully, the Albanese government refused to sign. They were really quoting Homer Simpson in that series. Oh, wow. Uh, lefties losing it about law and order while being racist and incoherent? Well, must be a day ending in why. There's an Hispanic looking cop, a white cop, and a black cop. And you guys yelled another black cop, and you guys yelled cops and clan go hand in hand. How does that work? Do you know how that works? Me neither. Cops are racist, the clan is racist, and that's all the more we have to say. Cops are racist. Based on these cops, not these cops. We don't have any more to say. Yeah. You too? <laughs> we don't have any more to say, but they always do, don't they? And, and it's always the whitest dude or girl who's spewing that rubbish on behalf of us brown and black folk. Uh, now I've got something for you, a little bit special. This isn't a lefty losing it. In fact, it's it's the opposite. It's someone who used to be off the left and I think they've had their eyes opened. And what Joe Rogan says here is, uh, oh, it's worth listening to. The people that are afraid of Trump, they're like, he's a moderate. He's a moderate in this movement. And believe me, if, if you guys with him more, someone else is going to come along that's going to resonate with these people that realize they're getting and it's going to be just like what's happening in Argentina where this guy gets elected and he's like everything, everything's got to go, everything's got to go and it's wild because people are very excited about that. There's a there's a, a groundswell of people that are really fed up with this bull being implemented in all sorts of countries all over the world. He's 100% right. All those people trying to interfere with democracy, trying to remove Donald Trump from the ballot. If you're going to not like what comes after Trump, uh, <laughs> just let the people make the choice and uh, be grateful that at his heart, Trump is a moderate. You look at his policies, he is nothing like the ogre that the left make him out to be.